This week's podcast flows directly from the one I did on procrastination last week. So if you haven't listened to that one, don't worry about it at all. Not at all. Not at all. I mean, hopefully you will go back and listen to episode 24. But you're here now, and I'm so happy that you are. What if you decided as of today that from now on until the end of the world, you are always right where you need to be? What if you decided that you don't need to catch up with anything, that you have exactly what you need to make the next best choice? Not just in this podcast or in coaching, but in everything. What if you decided that you were in exactly the right place to do the next right thing and there was never again any reason you couldn't move forward on anything that's important to you? If you never got any other thought from me, this might be the one I would most like you to try on. Decide. Decide that you are right where you need to be. Because that's where all the power of your humanity and your intelligence is located. Right here. Right now. If you decide that, you will never need to procrastinate again. So promise me that you'll remember that. And when I forget it, please remind me. You're listening to Veg Your Best, the plant-based podcast. My name is Michelle Olander. I'm a certified life coach, a practicing vegan, and I'm here every single week asking you to eat more plants and set an impossible goal, whatever that is for you. Episode 25, Deciding to Decide. Hey, Veg Heads. Veg your besties. So last week, We talked about some drama I have been having about recording my podcast before the deadline I have with my producer, Charlie. Charlie wants this podcast delivered to him in a sound file about a week before it goes live on Tuesdays, 12.01 a.m. And I have a thought every week that I would like to get it to him on Mondays so that I don't end up thinking about it during the week when I'm coaching and doing the business of running my coaching business. I also have a thought that I would like to batch or pre-record a few podcasts so that they're in the shoot, as it were, and I wouldn't necessarily be thinking about them every single week. So my drama has been that I haven't been finishing the podcast ahead of time, nor have I been batching and getting a few extras done ahead of time. And as we discussed last week, I have made that mean that I'm unproductive, undisciplined, etc. We talked about that last week when you coached me, dear listener. You coached me. You coached me to realize that this wasn't really that big a deal and that I am the one making it mean a lot of negative things about myself. Because actually, the podcast is getting done every week and we are now on episode 25. And the drama is actually a lot, a lot of unnecessary energy going towards no good purpose. And I could just as factually say, wow, me, I'm doing an awesome job getting that podcast done every single week. Why? Why would I make it mean that I'm failing at getting ahead or undisciplined for not doing the work early. Why? Because of our negativity bias, our brain is just set up naturally to notice what's wrong 
or scary or dangerous. And many of us use our brains not just against danger and predators in the world, but against ourselves too. And on top of that, I think we have a cultural tendency to think it's somehow somehow more seemly to not accept a compliment and not acknowledge what we're doing very well. And notice instead where there's still room for improvement. And there is probably a place for some quiet, self-deprecating humor. But I think I may have taken it a bit too far. And I think most of the people that I talk with do, too. Because as we discussed last week, a little bit, we think that if we say, yes, I'm doing an awesome job, that we will get a big head and we won't get any better. And in fact, we might actually jinx ourselves. If I take credit for doing this very well, then I might drop my guard and the whole thing could go the other way. I don't think I'm the only person who has this habit. And I would argue that this is a pretty big, though common, thought error. If we enjoy our success at something, it doesn't mean that we really are more likely to slip and fall. And if we are always criticizing the work we do, it also doesn't mean that we will improve. So last week, we talked about procrastination of an activity that has a deadline. And once I was really able to sit with the idea that it was me making the process overly dramatic and illustrative of my many failings, thanks to you coaching me through it step by step, I was able to just calm the heck down. I was able to calm the heck down and decide, just decide, not to have this weekly issue to beat myself up with. I was able to just decide that it's not really a problem. So this week, I decided not to put the deadline to finish the podcast on my calendar for Monday, and just to drop that whole narrative and see what happens. So it is only one week in, and I am recording this podcast on Wednesday, and I am noticing the thought pop up in my head here and there. Sure would have been nice if this had been done Monday, but that's okay. It's just a thought, and I can have a thought without actually entertaining that thought, making that thought mean so very much about me. I can have a thought about any well, infinite number of things without making it mean anything's wrong. So that's the process this week for me. And that's something we will revisit. We're going to see over the next few weeks how it settles in. But because it's my belief that I can just decide to stop judging myself harshly over this thought, that's what I did. I decided. Now, I can get further into why I have not recorded a few extra podcasts to have in the can in case there is an issue at some point, in case Charlie can't produce one week or in case I have some sort of scheduling problem or emergency. And I think that will be very interesting. Just because I have decided that this is not a problem and it is not evidence of anything wrong with me, it doesn't mean that I've given up my preference to have some podcasts in the can produced ahead of time. So this brings us to the difference in things we procrastinate on, things that we put off, things with an external deadline and things with no deadline. My podcast, for example, last summer was something I wanted but it did not have a deadline. I had not started it yet. Now, my podcast has a weekly deadline. Think about your own life, you. Think about something you want to do that so far has no real deadline. Hmm? 
got something. In fact, it may be something that you want to do, but you may even have that anxiety that putting deadlines in place to bring it into the world may seem very overwhelming. What is it for you? Maybe write a book or an article or commit to transitioning to a whole food, plant-based diet. Build a website. Start selling vegan meals or meal plans or recipes. Maybe you want to help moms work out and feel confident in their post-childbirth bodies through yoga or Pilates. Maybe you have a dream of getting your blog posted or getting booked on a podcast as a guest or getting your YouTube channel up and running. These are some of the things I see people on my social media pages working on and posting about, and a lot of them are brilliant ideas. But for most of them, there are no deadlines. Not for some of these dream goals and these side gigs that are in the very early stages. And meanwhile, there are deadlines for mortgage payments and rent, school fees, credit card payments, class signups, tax returns, kids' birthdays, work deadlines, lots of deadlines, lots of dates and time-sensitive activities. And if those dreams that you have don't get assigned a couple deadlines, well, they can really fizzle, can't they? They don't even get a chance to fail. They just fizzle, really just dissolve. And we have all the excuses in the world, see? All of us have these. Impossible with my work schedule, with my family, no. With my financial situation, with my health situation, with my school calendar this year. You might be thinking, oh, it would be nice for me to write a book. It would be nice to make more money. It would be nice to build a business. Well, I would like to suggest that those things are not just about you. They aren't just things that would be nice for you. Because if you have that desire inside of you, and you really like your reason for why you would like something, that, in my opinion, means it's your responsibility to go and get it. Get moving towards it, ready or not. Not because I want you to have a long list of achievements on your resume. I just think, well, I really think our world, our human race, depends on it. No pressure. (laughs) Especially, especially here in our vegan and plant-based and vegetarian communities, I think we have to keep taking the initiative. Keep taking it on. Keep bringing our dreams and goals into fruition. Because we can't depend on other people to do that for us, right? I think we all have to do our part in this community and our part. We can only know what that is by paying close attention, being conscious of our own desires. I'm telling you, I think it's really important. And procrastination is the opposite of that. Procrastination is putting off because we're Well, maybe we're afraid, maybe we're feeling lazy, or maybe we're feeling overwhelmed, confused, or we're indulging in some other emotion that's preventing us from creating, building, and moving forward. Anytime you hear yourself say out loud or inside your brain the words, I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. I want you to remember, yes, it's normal, but it's not a legitimate reason to not do something. 
I don't feel like it. You will not always, and in fact, most of the time when you are evolving into that next version of you, you will not feel like it. (laughs) I'm sorry to tell you now. Evolving is uncomfortable. But remember, we talked about it. Discomfort is the currency of your dreams. I shared that thought with you from Brooke Castillo in the past. Discomfort is the currency of your dreams. I guarantee you will feel the opposite of feeling like doing it. And that's when you know maybe you better. Maybe you must move forward. That's why having time scheduled to do it and knowing it's not negotiable is the best way to follow through on these things. If you are constantly only doing what you feel like doing, I'm afraid you are going to be moving backwards. We've talked about the motivational triad. Remember, we've talked about how our primitive brain evolved to seek pleasure avoid pain, and exert the least amount of energy possible. That's how we survived for millennia in the forests and savannas, the jungles, the Arctic, through the ice ages and pestilence and migrations. We survived because our brain had at its core a very simple remit. Notice and avoid danger, seek pleasure, and exert as little energy as possible. But here we now are, the year 2021. We have survived to the point where that motivational triad maybe is not serving us quite as well. Most of the people in my podcast audience, at least. And in fact, it may be preventing us from evolving to our next levels if we keep honoring what got us here. It's such a metaphor for our lives in terms of business, in terms of personal development, in terms of our entire life. What got us here won't get us to that next level. And we actually have to try to reverse the motivational triad to evolve beyond survival, because that's what that primitive brain was trying to do. It was just trying to get us to survive long enough to reproduce and care for our young long enough for them to survive. So to reverse the motivational triad is to try and evolve beyond the survival instinct. And that means pursuing some discomfort a little discomfort, which means your brain is going to be terrified, right? It's going to be like, no, 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 no. What are you doing? We should be just seeking pleasure. This served us just fine when we were living in a cave. And it's not serving us quite so well now that we live typically in climate-controlled homes and cars. We have big refrigerators and cupboards filled with sweet and salty snacks, rosé wine, pain pills. Our primitive brains search for pleasure, for ease, and the avoidance of effort. Well, it's definitely going to prefer Netflix, large screen TVs, video games, comfy couches, weighted blankets, but to evolve to our next level, to grow and create and build and invent, we need to be willing to experience a little emotional pain. And it's just not being forced on us so much in our modern world. We have to open ourselves up to it. We have to be willing to exert more energy Not the kind where we're flipping out, hyperventilating, and flailing around all the time, but the kind where we're allowing some uncomfortable energy to flow through us and produce the work we are meant to produce in the world. And notice that when you're doing your best work, it doesn't always feel 
like eating dessert. <laughs> Sometimes we think that if we're doing the right work, that it's going to feel effortless and inspired. That if it's the right work, it should feel like flow all the time, something effortless and divine. And sometimes it does. And that might be the worst part of it because I think we want it to feel that way all the time. And the more you realize that doing good work is going to feel hard and sometimes even a little bit awful, the more emotional management, the more emotional responsibility you have and the less you'll procrastinate. The more you recognize that you are the one, the only one creating your emotions, the less you will use these uncomfortable feelings as an excuse not to create something. That primitive brain, that lizard brain, adores a deadline that can slip by, that can occasionally be ignored. And if that primitive brain can justify the lapsed deadline with a statement like, yeah, but I was busy, so busy, that's why I couldn't get it done. The kids needed me, or my spouse, or my employer, or the house needed work because that sounds respectable. That sounds safe. As long as you aren't really changing anything, as long as you don't challenge the status quo, no one can make fun of you. You can't really fail. You can't be laughed at. And so resistance looks for ways to appear busy while not actually doing anything. <laughs> Do you, have you worked out how to do that, how, what that looks like at your house? Resistance. Your brain looks for ways to look nobly busy, even overburdened, maybe even too weak or ill or infirm right now. And so we can hide. We hide behind our loved ones, our homes, even our health. Can you relate to that? If you don't do that thing, that project, that creation, that art, no one can take shots at it. No one can roll their eyes or say, wait, what? You took all that time and energy to make that? You could spend a couple of hours every day building something, creating something, writing something, not knowing exactly how it's going to turn out. Or you could eat dessert, scroll your phone, and watch a movie. Or if you're me and you have something really wrong with you, you could do housework. I have been known to hide behind housework. How crazy is that? Because dessert, TV, even housework, we know what that's about, don't we? It's not scary, but it's hiding. It seems worthy. It seems adult and responsible or normal, but sometimes it's just hiding because we're usually really, really good at procrastinating things that give us long-term pleasure and really, really bad at procrastinating things that give us short-term pleasure. What gives us long-term pleasure? Starting a new food plan, exercising, sitting down and writing that book or article, creating content in our business, organizing our finances. We're really good at procrastinating those things that we don't see, we don't see the full benefit of for a while. And we are not good at all procrastinating those things that give us instant gratification sugary or fatty foods, scrolling the phone, video games, binge watching TV, online shopping, having a couple of glasses of wine. So that's a way of looking at it, isn't it? If you think I am a procrastinator, well, you probably don't procrastinate everything, do you? So those things that give us a dopamine hit of pleasure, hyperpalatable food, alcohol, online shopping, phone scrolling, TV, we are not usually procrastinating those things very well at all. 
and then the time's gone. And not only have we had that dopamine hit, that cheap hit of easy pleasure, we have also spared ourselves the discomfort of working on something long-term that brings up all our doubt and anxiety. We have successfully hidden from working on our dream or goal for another afternoon. Why does it matter? Well, I think, I think our culture, our community, our world needs you to come out of hiding and demonstrate that the risk is really just that we might feel like crap now and then. Discomfort is the currency of our dreams. Because unfortunately, we feel like crap when we stay stuck, too. We just, most of us, we're just used to that feeling. We have been feeling stuck so long, maybe, that it feels normal, kind of feels fine. Nothing that vegan ice cream, rosé, scrolling on our phones or Netflix can't fix. And so we procrastinate getting on with our dream, our goal, our initiative. Running for local office. Organizing a community. Delaying our dream prevents the discomfort, yes. It delays the judgment, the possibility, well, the reality, actually, that some people will have thoughts or comments about your goal. And delaying it pretends to give us time to make it perfect. We get to hide behind a thought that seems reasonable. That thought is, I'm not ready yet. I need a little more time, maybe later, because, you know, this is too important to half-ass. Really? Because if it's too important to half-ass, is it possible that it's also too important to procrastinate? Too important to delay? Where are you hiding? You, where are you hiding? What are you hiding behind? So many of us are hiding behind our families, right? Our loved ones. This dream, this goal, this project, it'll take time away from them. It might take money away from them. It might take my focus away from them. And while you cling to that thought, you only find evidence that that's likely, that's true. (laughs) That's our brain at work. What if I asked you what you could accomplish today or this week that would move you toward your goal that would not take anything away from your family? That's a different question. Now your brain gets to work on another problem. It gets to work on another solution. Because if you have a goal, a dream that you're procrastinating on, I would suggest that it is already taking away some of your focus from your family. Maybe it actually sometimes leads to a little bit of irritation or resentment or annoyance when you think you can't get moving on that plan. Is that how you want to feel about your family? (laughs) Maybe. I don't know. Maybe focusing regularly on your very own dream and stopping that procrastination actually gives you more warmth and unadulterated enjoyment of your family. Maybe? Is it possible? And listen, there might be no one who ever establishes a deadline for your goal or your dream. There might Never, ever be a day and a time that you need to submit your book or your business plan or your YouTube channel by unless you decide. And I would suggest that decision-making ultimately is the business we are all in as humans in this complex modern society. Our day-to-day business really is decision-making. 
And if you are like most of the people that I work with, you've decided to limit or eliminate the consumption of animal products. That's a decision that is very foundational for me and for most of the people in my social media. And most of them will tell you it's so much easier once you make the decision. Now, it doesn't mean that nothing goes wrong. It doesn't mean that there is never an awkward situation or that we don't goof up or we don't make a huge mistake or get upset with ourselves or others. But it's a decision. And once we make that decision, we just keep coming back to making the decision work. My coach always says that she has an agreement with herself that her decision is always right. Now, that might be a little advanced for most of us non-Jedis, but I think it's something we can try on. We make a decision, and then we just decide that whatever happens, we're not going to beat ourselves up about that decision. Sure, we can certainly change our minds, change that decision, but it's not because the decision was bad, not because we made a bad decision, but because we learned more that allowed us to make a better decision. What do you think? What do you think about that goal or project or dream that you have been procrastinating about? I think about my great-great-grandparents who had so few options most days. They got up and spent the whole day figuring out how to keep everyone alive, how to keep the roof overhead in every kind of weather. But in 2021, for most of us, most of us listening here, our real job is to make decisions in a world with millions and millions of choices. Make more decisions. I'm telling you, that's the only way to get better at it. And decisions are the antidote to procrastination. <laughs> and I know right now I can almost hear it. Some of you are thinking, okay, Michelle, it's not really that easy. I can't just decide and voila. But I think, I think maybe you can. Remember, we talked about starting before we're ready a couple of weeks ago. That's a decision. To decide before we know exactly what it's all going to look like. You know, with some things in our culture, we do just that. Romantic relationships, for many of us, we know only the tiniest fraction of a fraction of how that's going to turn out. And yet, we think it's pretty normal to decide and do our best to make it work, to build a life with a partner. And children, take it from me, we have no idea what specifically will come with children, <laughs> but a good portion of us choose to take on that discomfort. University or a job, we start and we make a decision almost never with a completely reasoned plan beforehand. And there are ups and downs in all of these. And now there is your personal dream or goal, your lifestyle, your creation, your art, or your business. You do not get to know ahead of time exactly how it's going to go. In fact, in fact, you would actually feel robbed if I handed you a fully detailed plan that told you step by step exactly how it's going to go, even if at the end it was guaranteed to be a success. Because the whole point is that this is yours, only yours. The whole point is that you don't get to know ahead of time. And we all need you to stop procrastinating and go after it. Set a date. Set a date to make one small step. 
I know you think you want to know that it's going to work, that it's going to be a success, that you will never regret it. Okay, well, that's your decision too. Did you know that? You are the only one that gets to decide if it's a success. You're the only one that gets to decide if it was worth it. So decide. Decide that it's worth it. Decide that it's going to be a success. Yes, it will probably look different than anything you can imagine right now. Maybe decide that that's the whole fun of it. What do you say? Let's not put this off any longer. I have an eight-week process I work with my clients on to stop procrastinating and birth their project, get their goal or dream or plan out into the world. I would love to help you put that together. You can email me, but I really suggest you follow the links in the notes to download my PDF called Your Next Eight Weeks. Your Next Eight Weeks. It's a great way to get your thoughts together about your side gig or your project. And I think it should be the first thing you do to end your cycle of procrastination. What do you say? That's a small thing. Just go to the link in the notes, download the PDF called Your Next Eight Weeks. Because this isn't just about you, you know. We need you. Cue the Stoics. While we wait for life, life passes. Seneca. That's to the point, no? While we wait for life, life passes. Thank you, Seneca. If you would like to discuss how coaching can help you defeat procrastination, decide what's next, and create a plan that moves your dreams to the next level, email me or sign up directly in my calendar on the website. You can find all the links in the show notes and definitely, definitely download the PDF your next eight weeks. It's very similar to the work I do with my new clients. Don't put it off. Veg Your Best podcast production, music, and editing by Charlie Weinshank. Thanks, Charlie. Before you go, it would mean so much to me and the Veg Your Best team if you would hit subscribe, leave us a five-star review, or share with someone you think might be interested. Something about algorithms, it helps bump us up a little in the rankings, and that's the best way to help others find the podcast and for us to find our audience. So until next week, make it easy and veg your best.